This is the Blaze Radio. The Chris Salcedo Show. Part of Generation Blaze. Only on the Blaze Radio Network. Bo Bergdahl. Uh, Team Obama's idea of serving with honor and distinction is uh, abandoning one's comrades in arms, abandoning one's country, abandoning one's unit. That Look... It's seeming now the trial has not been conducted, but it's seeming with uh, increasing uh, certainty that uh, Mr. Bergdahl didn't do things the right way. And if it is all playing out the way his troop mates are alleging it will, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bergdahl is turning out to be Barack Obama's kind of soldier, one who abandons his country. Uh, let's talk about what's ahead for Mr. Bergdahl and the merits of what is being charged toward this uh, this former soldier, Brian Buffard. He uh, is, uh, well, he earned his law degree at Duke University Law School, former Navy JAG officer, practices law in Fort Worth, Texas. He is a criminal and military defense counsel. He travels the globe representing service members facing court-martial. Mr. Buffard, welcome back to the Chris Salcedo Show here on The Blaze. Chris, thanks for having me. Okay, let's talk about the legal aspects of this case. Uh, boil down the charges being level, leveled against Mr. Bergdahl and uh, the, the penalty they carry. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Sergeant Bergdahl is charged with two offenses under the UCMJ. He's charged with desertion, uh, with intent to avoid hazardous duty or service. And we, we were all anticipating that, I, I think, for, for months and months now. But the Army also charged him with one specification of misbehavior before the enemy. And specifically what they're saying that he did is that through, through, leaving, uh, through leaving his post, he thereby endangered the safety of his command and that he, caused, he wrongfully caused search and rescue operations that he knew would take place. So the, the government is, is explicitly referencing and, and charging the fact that uh, they did send soldiers out to look for him, and, and six of them lost their lives. I know that you can't tell the seriousness of the charge by the sound of the charge, but I'm telling you, when I heard this, I said, okay, let me, let, let me get this straight. Desertion gets you about, I think it was five years, right? And, uh, he, but mis, misbehavior before the enemy, which sounds a lot, a lot more timid, to be frank, that could get you anywhere from life to the death penalty, yes? Well, yeah, conceivably, yes. The, the death penalty is not on the table in this case because it, re it requires a declared war by Congress. And even though we all, common sense tells us we've been at war since 9-11, uh, we, we don't have a declared war, so that provision of the statute does not kick in. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, what's next for Bergdahl? What happens next? Well, the next thing that's going to happen uh, is the, you know, the, the preliminary fact-finding investigation phase is now done. They, they've, they've made the decision to charge him. And so the next uh, phase is an Article 32 hearing. And the way to think about that is it's the equivalent of a grand jury hearing in the civilian world. It is, it is truly nothing more than a minor speed bump for the prosecution. And the only thing they have to do is, is show that they have probable cause. They have sufficient evidence that there is probable cause that these crimes were committed and that Sergeant Bergdahl committed them. So once that hurdle has, has been cleared, uh, the case will undoubtedly be referred. I, I would anticipate it will be referred to a general court-martial, which is the most serious uh, level of court-martial. And uh, at that point, it's going to be in the hands of a military judge, a prosecutor, and, and uh, Sergeant Bergdahl's defense team. Uh, Brian Buffard, my guest right now, he is a former Navy JAG officer. I want you to put on your military hat for me, if you will. A couple of sound bites I want you to react to. First off, it's uh, Ron Fournier and Jason Riley. They are ripping the White House defense of uh, uh, basically saying we don't leave anybody behind uh, as as justification for what many analysts that I've seen are saying was a was a bad trade for top military five top military commanders in wartime while the war is still going on for an individual who the administration had every expectation of knowing had disappeared under very suspect circumstances and most likely a deserter. Listen to their analysis and I want you to comment. Even if you say we don't leave anyone behind, that doesn't mean you have to turn him into a hero. 
before you know all the facts. That's my biggest problem. That's what they decided. I mean, they have a fundamental problem at this White House, and actually in this town, but certainly this White House, of of thinking that just because we say something, the American people are going to believe it. We, we We can pretend something is true that's not. And they really thought that when they said that he served with honor and distinction, that would end the story. They really thought that when, during an election year, when, or at least when he was worried about his approval ratings, if they brought these folks into the, the Rose Garden, his parents, that they could play him up like a hero, and they thought it would help the president's popularity. They thought we would just, that we were too dumb to realize. And what they have forgotten is that the media landscape has changed, the way people get their information has changed, and you just can't BS the American people like you could back in the 1990s. And they were caught trying to BS the American public. Ron Fournier is a liberal. And here he is saying that the Obama White House was trying to BS the American people by trying to make this a, a kumbaya welcome home story for a guy that, that really didn't, didn't measure up to the standards that, uh, that the American people have for the military. What say you? Yeah, I, I think that soundbite you just played, I think that's an extremely fair analysis, and, and I don't disagree with it. I, I think the – now, I, you know, whether or not Susan Rice was told to portray him as somebody who served with honor and distinction or whether she's just a buffoon who knows nothing about the military and just said that, you know, either way, the, the Army had a duty to, and I feel certain did, brief the administration on what they knew about Sergeant Bergdahl's disappearance back in 2009. And that's enough information that, a, to me, a, a smart call would have been to tap the brakes on the whole he's a hero thing and just play it up as, look, he's one of our service members. He may or may not have committed misconduct. That's beside the point right now. We need to get him back. We owe him that. And if he needs to face justice, he'll face it here. I think right. if they had done that, they would be in a better position. But e- elevating it to a, a place where Barack Obama invites the parents into the Rose Garden, a big media event, it turned into a big media circus, and then oh, the, yeah. Father, yeah. the father of Bergdahl starts um, uh, uh, uttering in Pashtun the enemy's language, uh, talking to his son in the enemy's language. It was just, it was surreal. It was really, it was just all part of this this theater that had no resemblance to reality, which is, I would say, the stock and trade of this administration. But, I mean, as a man it who really served was theater. His, yeah, it was theater. But as a man who served his country the way you did honorably, I mean, just as a military guy, when you saw this display, what went through your head? Well, you know, again, just as, as I said, I, I thought that it was uh, it was kabuki theater, and uh, it's 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 disappointing to me, you know, regardless of whose administration it is. I think the, the, the government has a, a history and has a penchant for speaking to the rest of us as if we are idiots. And uh, unfortunately, many of us are, uh, because we, we, you know, we, we get the government that we've deserved and we elected these people. So, uh, you know, I, I guess on, on some sense, you know, in, in some sense, they're, they're almost justified in thinking we're idiots. But unfortunately for them, not all of us are. Well, thankfully that uh, they don't populate this audience, for goodness sake. Brian Buffard, he is a former Navy JAG officer, practices law in Fort Worth, Texas. If folks want to check out what you do, sir, where can they go? Where's the website? My website is jagdefender.com. Jagdefender.com. Brian Buffard, always appreciate your time and expertise here on the Salcedo Show. Thanks, Chris. You betcha.